morning to you all. And welcome to God's house on this second Sunday of the season of Advent. Uh, Advent is a word that means he's coming. As we light the second candle on the Advent wreath now, we're reminding ourselves that we're getting closer to Christmas, celebrating Jesus' first coming. And our Advent theme helps us also not only get ready for that, but also for Jesus' second coming. Even more importantly, huh? Um, our Advent theme in these weeks before Christmas is when the Lord comes near. Uh, and today we see the focus on God's people. When the Lord comes near, he humbles his people. So with that, we begin with the opening hymn, number 27, O Jesus, Lamb of God, you are. God bless our worship. Thank you. Thank you. 
prince of this world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. second Sunday in Advent. Again, the theme today, when our Lord comes near, he humbles his people. A lesson from Malachi, reading in chapter 3. Listen now and see how through God's word and the messengers who proclaim it, the Lord humbles his people, purifying our hearts so that we might stand on the last day. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who bring offerings to righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord, as in days gone by, as in former years. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. We join now together in singing the verses of Psalm 66, as you find it on page 90. <coughs> Love 
and humility, how that's God's work within us. He began this good work at our baptism, and he will carry it on to completion. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Well, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And all people will see God's salvation. Alleluia. Alleluia. Gospel reading there in chapter 3. Who has spoken through the prophets? 
We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, number 16, on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cross. on God's word this morning in the name of Jesus, the one who says, Behold, I am coming soon, dear Christian friends. Well, this past week, or was it the week before? Yeah, I, I was out there on our church sign with all those letters, you know, and uh, trying to figure out what am I going to put up for Advent? You know, so I thought about it, hmm. Well, a hymn came to mind, and it's one from Christian Worship, hymn number six, entitled, Come, O Long Expected Jesus. Maybe you've seen that on the sign. That, that sums up our sentiment here in Advent, doesn't it? Our prayer, come, Lord Jesus, come, O long expected Jesus. And as I put up each of the letters of the sign, I couldn't help but think about people People in my own family that I, I pray are going to be ready when our Lord comes near again. I couldn't help but think about all of you, the members of grace. How many of you, all of us together, are ready, truly ready in faith for that day he comes again. I, I couldn't help but also think of people in the community around us who will walk by our sign and I hope maybe read it or drive by and see that that prayer of the church come O long expected Jesus welcome again to our Advent series when the Lord comes near 
Last week, as always, the focus is on Christ, right? And when the, when the Lord comes near, we saw how he humbles himself. Right? We, we connected thoughts of Jesus, Palm Sunday, Sunday entry into Jerusalem on that lowly donkey with thoughts of the way he comes so lowly and is born in a manger at Bethlehem. We saw how all of that really kind of alerts us to the fact of that he would one day die on the cross in a lowly and humble way to save us. Today, the second Sunday in Advent, the, the focus again is still on Christ, but it shifts so ever slightly to his people. When the Lord comes near, what does he do? In addition to humbling himself, he humbles you, his people. It's all about the true inner preparation of the Christian for the Lord's coming. Not just at Christmas, but at the end of time. And we really need help with that. We need help at Christmas time to stay focused, don't we? Because there's so many things to do. It, it's almost exhausting sometimes. You're trying to make Christmas special for everyone else, and you run yourself ragged. Uh, there's the lights to go up. There's the tree and decorations to go up. There's baking and there's there's uh, meal planning and, and parties maybe and, and house cleaning because guests are coming and, and it can be overwhelming and, and it can all kind of fly by so fast that Christmas gets here and we've had no time for that true inner preparation of our hearts. Maybe we don't even have any energy left for it. Maybe the thought of, of something more to do, like going to church and preparing my heart for the Lord Jesus, seems like just another task, something more on my plate. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. And, and what a relief it is to see in God's word today that this, oh, yeah. this humbling of our hearts, this inner preparation, it's not at all our work. It's not just something more we are expected to do, something that God extracts from us, but rather it is all his doing. It's all his working. It's all of his blessing through his word as he comes to us with his word, both law and gospel, and prepares us for his coming. We're told that St. John the Baptist came in the wilderness preaching a message of forgiveness and repentance. What a humbling preacher of the, of the human heart. By nature, it's like a wilderness, isn't it? By nature, it's not a positive picture. It's a negative one. By nature, our sinful nature is turned away from God. And and. We desperately need God, our Savior, to come in his word and through his messengers to, to turn us around back again to him and his word through this message of repentance and forgiveness. See God doing all the work here. He's sending his messenger ahead of his son. He's giving that messenger a message. He's giving that messenger someone to, to point everyone to. And, and John comes then in verses 4 and 5, preparing the way for the Lord. He says, make straight paths for him. He says, every valley shall be filled in. Where are those valleys in our life that, that need filling by God's blessing in his word? And every mountain and hill will be made low and cut down. The crooked roads shall become straight. The rough ways made smooth. Again, more humbling truth about human nature. It's by nature, again, our way is not straight. By nature, our hearts are crooked. And John says, and he told the people by the Jordan, you need straightening out. In other words, our sin is a problem, and it's not just something to skirt around. Sin isn't just like a pothole out on the road in winter time. If you just avoid it enough, you'll be okay. No, oh, our sin isn't just the things we do. It's what we are. Our unholy birth, ever since Adam's fall, has left us separated from God. Only Jesus' 
holy birth would, would sanctify and save us. Only his work on the cross, only his merit redeems us and brings us back to God. And so John's message wasn't, you know, come on, just try a little harder, folks. Just do a little something different. Turn over a new leaf. Rather, it was repent. Repentance is a change of heart and an attitude about sin. It's like a big U-turn. Repentance is us admitting our sins they take us in the wrong direction away from God. And again, I need you, Lord, to turn me around in my tracks and to bring me back to you through your son, Jesus. How does that happen? John tells us every mountain and hill will be made low. Cutting down the mountains, it's like a, a, a picture of, again, our natural human condition of pride that... that um, that place that we operate from based on our high assumption of ourselves. Um, yes, it's that part of us that, think that thinks that there's nothing wrong, that there's nothing we need to repent of. If that's the case, that mountain of pride needs to be cut low, John says. Just think of the things Mary sang about in her song, the Magnificat. She sang about how God would scatter the proud in their conceit. And so it's pride that leads us to conclude, well, I only need to hear God's comfort once or twice a year at the holidays, but not much more than that. That towering pride needs to be brought low. If I think my sins are small compared to others, again, it's time for my mountain to be cut down. If you think you're doing enough for God, that you've given all you can for his church and that it's someone else's turn now. Again, that mountain needs to be brought low. If you think you know all you need to know about God and don't have any need for his word and study of it, your mountain needs to be chopped down before the Lord will enter your heart. When the Lord comes near, he humbles his people he does this through the law, which strikes terror in our hearts. He shows us our need for forgiveness, and then he fills that need, doesn't he? There are also valleys, John says. Just like the world John lived in was filled with proud and stubborn hearts, there were also there were people that were filled with trouble and sadness, tired hearts. There were people who were really bothered by their sins. There were people who were frustrated, not at other people, but, but with themselves. There were people who felt that their sins were just too big for anyone to forgive. And to those who feel low like that, they can only have their hearts filled with the good news about God's love in the gospel. They need to be told that even though their sins are big, that they have a Savior who's bigger still for all the poor, humble sinners, John came pointing to that Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He came to help the poor, the sick, the humble. And still today, he listens to them. He listens to you as you pour out your prayers to him and he answers you from heaven. John the Baptist, he came preparing the way by lifting up sad hearts and pointing them to their only source of true comfort and joy this time of year we're in, and that is Jesus. So are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus coming? Are you ready when he says he will draw near? Are you even wanting him to come? Well, if you are, and it will show, it won't just be something on the inside, it'll, it'll be a preparation that shows on the outside. When Jesus is the vine and you're the branches, there will be fruit, he says. And so everything crooked has to go. You will allow more time for worship. You will be more generous. You'll be more kind to your spouse or to your neighbor, your family. 
You'll be more content with what God has given you. Your conversation with friends will be free of gossip and without grumbling or anger. You'll begin your day with prayer, and you'll end it with thanksgiving. And you'll want to spend more time meeting with him in his word, where he promises to meet with you and continue to keep drawing you close to himself so that you're ready and waiting in faith on that day when he comes near. And so there will be a straightening out of, of what's crooked in your life. And you'll shine. You'll be like a light in a beacon that also alerts others to Jesus coming. And so the believer prays, Dear Lord, help me, help me to be to like, like John the Baptist, help me to, to listen to his voice and let others hear that message of repentance through me as well so that together we are ready when the Lord comes near. God grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, continue to guard and keep our hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.
But the spiritual valleys of our sins are so many. Cause us to repent of our sins and trust in your abundant forgiveness offered in this supper, your true body and blood and your promise of forgiveness that fills in those valleys and, and, and gives us your blessing and assurance of heaven. Then a highway will be prepared in our hearts to meet you and we will see your salvation one day. Lord, we continue to uh, pray for our, our brothers and sisters in the faith, uh, thinking of Kitty, who is hospitalized now with COVID-19. And we ask that you have compassion and you show mercy on her. Uh, transform even sickness and disease into a blessing for, for her, as you promised. Um, with, with your confidence in your promises, we commit her uh, to your tender care. Um, provide healing and relief through the doctors and the nurses in keeping with your gracious goodwill and your, your plans for her. We pray deliver her, Lord, in your righteousness. Um, if this suffering must linger, give her patience and endurance and help her to find true spiritual strength through you, Jesus, and your cross as the sure and certain sign of your love. Again, continue to lift us up through the message of that cross and empty tomb, Lord. Keep us ready in faith for your coming again. As together your church prays, come, O long-expected Jesus. Amen. We also join to pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue now on page 21 in the front of our hymnals. We join together in the order of service for the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. You are at peace with God. Amen.
We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.